What's up guys? It's Yanni with Black Label Gallery. This is day two of teaching you how to sketch your furry best friend. As far as paintbrushes go, this is a random assortment. There's some more over here. We're just going to use whatever we need. The excess, I mean, the more you paint, the more brushes you're going to get. And I like to use Soho Studio Wipes. It kind of keeps your hands a little clean so you're not rubbing it all over your clothes and whatnot. For a mixing board, I use one of these handheld small mixers because it's easy to carry without slipping. This is a clear one. You can have wooden, whatever works for you. And of course, a nice big cup of water to rinse your brushes in. All right, guys, first rule of painting is you can never mess up. And second is always start from the background to the foreground. So in the background of this painting or the picture that we're trying to do, there's a little bit of clear blue sky. That's what we're going to work on first. And then the trees and the brush and everything up until the dogs from the back towards the front. Now to choose colors, I always use a white and a black, no matter what painting I'm doing. Typically, you're always going to need a little extra white somewhere and black to darken it. Sometimes just a little bit, but you still need to use it. So for the beautiful hay, we're going to mix yellow and red. And what I'm using over here is yellow ochre, cadmium red, titanium white, burnt umber, Mars black. And there's just a little bit of cobalt blue that we're going to use to mix with the yellow in order to get this green grass. The dogs, of course, it's going to be black. The burnt umber, I'm going to use in the backdrop a little bit over here. You can see that brown coming through and then the dogs as well. The black, of course, for the fur and then everything else is going to be a nice little blend. I like Soho oils and acrylics because the consistency is really thick. It's not runny like a lot of other paints. This is another brand, Chroma. It's good as well. I only have a little bit of this left, so we're going to go with Soho majority of the time. I'm going to use sponges. It's not something I work with a lot because I don't do a lot of fur, but this will give that fluffy texture you're looking for. You can see there's different textures of the sponges. One's a little harder, and then one's a lot fluffier and softer. So for the sky, because I don't want it to take up a lot of paint, I'm going to use the harder sponge with a flat surface over here. Check out what I'm doing over here. I'm using the flat edge of the sponge because I want to use as little paint as possible because you don't want a runny background. That's the last thing you want. You just want a clean slate so you can start real painting. Now, what I'm doing is taking the flat edge and dabbing it in the white. Spread it out a little bit get a nice little coat on there, just the edge. You don't have to get the whole thing dabbled in white. Just a little bit is enough. And I'm gonna dip a tiny bit of that blue. That's probably too much, but just a tiny bit of that blue. Do you see how big of an impact that little bit of blue makes? That's why you wanna use just a little bit of it. And I think that's even a little too much for what I wanna do over here. So I'm gonna mix in more white until I get that barely visible blue going on. All right, so now we're gonna do the background. And when you're painting on a big canvas like this, remember to always get the edges and the sides because then it looks like a more holistic painting instead of just a two-dimensional thing that you need to frame. Now, painting tip, if you want everything to blend together, you gotta do it while it's wet. That's why the blue and white blend together so well. And if you wanna layer it, you gotta wait till everything's dry so the colors don't mix together. You want a clear, distinct line between the trees and the sky. So I'm gonna wait till everything dries here. And acrylic generally doesn't take that long to dry. It's almost done. It'll probably take about five or 10 minutes and then we'll continue. Hey guys, we're gonna continue building this beautiful photo into canvas. Now, remember, number one rule of painting is you can't mess up. If you don't like what you did, always just wait till it dries and then layer over it with acrylic. It's really easy. There's no messing up. So don't ever give yourself a hard time about that. So one, you can never mess up. Two. Work from the background to the foreground. And number three is use whatever color you're using throughout the entire painting. I'm adding this color, Burnt Sienna. It's a warmer brown than the burnt umber, which looks almost black when you just squeeze it out of the tube, and the yellow ochre. So it's kind of a medium and it gives a warmer feeling. What I'm gonna use are two sponges. And this is kind of the softer texture sponge that I didn't use originally for the sky background. These are a puffy feeling, which is what I want for the trees. Now, when I dabble paint on the sponge, it's going to look like this. So it won't be even, but that's what gives the puffy feeling when you put it on canvas. What I'm doing is giving it a really rough background over here, just so there's not any white spots. So I'm connecting it with where I left off on the blue. Now, when I'm going over the dog's ears, the reason I traced everything in Sharpie is pencil would have normally just washed away by now. But with the Sharpie, you can still see what you're doing. That way you can keep the contours of the dog untouched. 
Same thing with the sky background. I'm going to pull the dark brush background a lot lower than it is because that way you can always layer on top of it. But if you have a white spot, it's pretty hard to cover that. So every painting, uh, don't worry about it. If you get to it sooner or later, always goes through an ugly duckling phase. And mine's pretty much there right now. It looks like a mess, but we're going to clean it up and it's going to look fantastic by the time we're done. So pull that background a little lower and dabble it to give it that texture. And then always remember to do the sides, otherwise you're going to end up with crazy looking white sides. So pull it lower, dabble it to mix up the texture, and then cover the sides. Now what I'm doing is adding shadow to the brush. And you can see on the sponge, I'm layering the burnt umber on pretty thick. So when you put it on canvas, it's going to be extra dark. And then that's what's going to bring out the shadows of the painting. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the general tree line of where this painting is going to be. And if you notice, my hand and sponge is pretty messy. If you want to learn how to keep your workspace clean, watch my tutorial on Black Label Gallery Quick and Dirty Tips, how to keep your workspace clean. This is what my palette looks like right now. What I did is dab some of this burnt sienna, mix it with the place where the burnt umber is, because it's mostly used, and just dabbing a little bit. Now, the sponge looks pretty modeled, and that's the kind of look you want, because not every leaf's gonna be the same shade of darkness or light. And when you start applying it to the canvas, it's gonna be really, really subtle at first. So don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like the photo right now, just continue working with it, and let's see where it goes. While the paint's wet, I'm gonna start mixing in the yellow. That way you can have highlights of yellow, but it still is able to be blended in into the burnt sienna and the dark umber over here. When the paint dries, it's a little harder to blend in. So I'm gonna show you what my palette looks like right now. You've got uh, the yellow ochre mixed with the cobalt blue, and then we're gonna do a little bit of green out of that instead of squeezing it straight out of the tube. And this is the brown that we've been using as the background. So all I did is mix the yellow and the blue together for this nice little green. You can make it darker by adding a little more blue, and you can make it lighter by adding more yellow. So we're just going to put a little more green around the dog's faces and all that does is give it a little more dimension. So the more you layer, the more dimensions you do have. And again, we're always working from the back towards the front. And then whatever you do, you got to mix it in a little bit. So I put a little bit of brown on here too. So it kind of blends in and it's not just a big square of green. And I'm going to put more green over here so it blends in also. And we're going to continue working with this until all the colors are blended together. What I'm going to do is add just a little bit of highlight on a yellow where the sun's going to be hitting the leaves the most. And I just added a little bit of white down here, mix the white with the yellow, and you're going to get splotches of white on the tips of the sponge. You can also do the same thing for a paintbrush. The only reason, again, that I'm using a sponge is because I've already started using the sponge for the sky. So you can do this technique with any kind of applicator you use. There's no messing up, so if you put too much sun, just go over it with the dark umber. Now to put more background detail into the brush back here in the tree line, I started with a new piece of aluminum foil wrapped around this palette, and I'm going to do the burnt sienna and the burnt umber, which is pretty much the colors that we have here to start making tree branches. And I've switched from a sponge over to a really skinny paintbrush, that way I can actually make the trees. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that burnt umber and then put it into the burnt sienna just to see what that mix looks like. So now paintbrush is covered and I'm gonna start making trees. Now when you're making these uh, branches, don't worry about everything overlapping. We're gonna go over it again with some leaves so it covers up the branches. All you're doing right now is just using very light pressure and just making some branches. And you're just gonna continue doing this. And then make sure you remember to do this down here too. The branches don't just start at the top of the trees. They go all the way from the bottom to the top. So you don't have to make a straight line all the way through. Just doing dots here, there, it'll give the impression of the branches coming through. So we just finished drawing all these tree branches and some of them you can tell kind of look like brown sticks just sticking up. And what I'm gonna do now is go over all that with a fan brush. It's my favorite brush for doing trees because it gives it a really nice texture and I'll show you how to use it. So colors again, we're gonna go back to the original color scheme that we used for the brush and the trees anyway. Burnt sienna, burnt umber, 
cobalt blue, yellow ochre, and titanium white. So we're going to use the same colors that we used over here and just going to go over it a little bit so it looks a lot more natural. To use a fan brush and how to mix paint, what I'm going to do is start off with a little bit of this yellow ochre because the area I'm working in is right here where we originally put yellow. So put the yellow ochre on the fan brush, mix it around until it's pretty nice on there. And I'm going to put just a little bit of this burnt sienna on here so it's not a flat yellow. And then when you apply to the canvas, all you need to do And do you see the texture start coming out of the tree? And as the tree's texture start coming out, the branches start getting hidden. And it has a lot more natural look to it. And again, we're painting from the background to the foreground, the same way that you would see everything in nature. The background would be hidden by everything that's in the foreground. So you've got a pretty natural look over here. Now, after this, what I'm going to do is start uh, using a little bit of this burnt sienna in the background to kind of blend the leaves in a little bit because the original before we started drawing the branches had some red in here too now the whole reason i'm moving back and forth between the canvas left side and the right side is we want to carry the paint over again the same reason why we use the blue down here instead of a tube of green is to carry that blue from the sky all the way down here. So now we're going in with a little more brown to give it a darker texture. And you can always go back and forth between the two colors. Now for that green again, I'm going to mix that yellow ochre with the cobalt blue over here. So just a little bit of blue is enough to turn this entire yellow into green. So I'm going to be pretty careful and use just a little bit at a time. So what we're getting now is a really, really deep, deep green. And I'm going to want to add a little more yellow to lighten it up a little bit. All right, and the last part of the trees, I'm going to add some highlights over here. And again, that's that yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of white.